Hello, I'm Farrell, and this is Sally, and we are bored of it. And today we're going to review a game close to our hearts, Viticulture. And Viticulture is an excellent example of a worker placement game. Due to the fact that it doesn't try to do anything too novel or zany, it's just pure worker placement strategy, complemented with the playing of cards. Now, it's for between one and six people, and the aim of the game is to have the best vineyard of anyone at the table. Now, you're going to be doing that through the growing of grapes, the making of wine, the fulfilling of contracts, and the playing of cards, all in search of those sweet, sweet wine points. No, victory points. Viticulture first came onto our radar because it's by the same publisher and designer as our all-time favourite game, Scythe, Stonemaier Games. Viticulture has become somewhat of a, a comfort game for us due to its great theme and straightforward mechanics. And we're very partial to celebrating Viticulture Fridays with a glass of wine and some snackies. <laughs> is to produce wine. And you're going to do this by getting these green cards, which represent types of vine. Then you're going to plant them in your fields. Then you can harvest these fields to get the grapes into your crush plant right here. Then you can make wine by moving the grapes from your crush pad into your cellar. At this point, you have wine and grapes in your crush pad and wine in your cellar will age each year. And the best way to get victory points is going to be to fill orders, which are these purple cards. And they will ask for a specific type of wine or wines, such as a four white and a four red. Now, you have to think early on about these orders because they're the best way to get points. So you want to kind of plan it the whole way through. So, you know, you're going to think, oh, do I need to plant a red? Do I need to harvest a red? And Combined with the fact that these age each year, sometimes you'll be waiting a few turns till you can fill an order. So always plan ahead. How is this all done? By worker placement. Need to get a green vine card? Place a worker. Need to plant that vine? Place a worker. All actions in this game are done by worker placement, including the playing of cards. Each round takes place over a year, which is subdivided into seasons. In spring, you'll pick the turn order, with going later providing better rewards such as an extra worker or victory points. In summer, you'll do actions associated with working your vineyard, such as building or planting. In fall, you'll pick a visitor card, which usually provides you with a way of gaining victory points or doing a regular action at a cheaper cost. And in winter, you do actions associated with harvesting grapes, making wines and fulfilling orders. Now, summer and winter are the seasons where worker placement takes place. And you've got to think very carefully about which worker to use for what, because you only get your workers back at the end of the year. So any workers you use in summer will not be available for winter. So plan ahead. Viticulture is the less friendly kind of worker placement game where there are limited spaces. So if you're six in the turn order and you want to plant a vine early on, good luck doing that. This is a really competitive game, which is surprising considering its friendly Tuscan exterior. But one really great aspect of gameplay design are these big fat grande workers. And this is because they allow you to take an action that has already been filled by other players, but you only get one of them. So they both alleviate the frustration of being blocked off from actions and give you tactical work placement options to think about. In a similar vein, Viticulture is a great game at any player count. Because the number of available actions directly correlates to the number of players, it results in a game that's just as competitive at two players as it is with six, and the grande workers are just as important. It's impressive because usually when the feel of a game doesn't change with the player count, it's because it's down to low player interaction or because it's a cooperative game. So the fact that Viticulture is just as competitive with two players is great game design. 
Now in typical Stonemaier fashion, the turns are short and snappy because all you do is place a worker and take an action or reward, it results in a game that is really well paced and doesn't outstay its welcome. The game will typically last around six to 10 in-game years, depending on the player count. And the final year is triggered when a player reaches 20 VP. Now, just because this player reaches 20 VP, doesn't mean that they win. So the game will end at the end of that year and this means that other players have a chance to also win. And it's quite a nice system because, you know, someone might crawl over 20, but then another player, they might fill an order that then gets them to 24 points or something. And also it can lead to surprises, which we think we always enjoy a surprise victory. You know, you might all be circling around the end, but just not have enough for that year. And then suddenly the player way back at 13 points will fill a seven victory point order play a winter card to get a few more victory points, declare this the final year of the game and then win because no one can react to it. On the other hand, there's a lot of randomness in viticulture due to the card system. And this is, you know, you're going to draw cards and you don't know what you're going to get for the orders and the vines. And there's nothing more frustrating than having two or three orders that will require red wine, but you're only drawing white grapes from the vine deck and thus unable to fill them. And sometimes in this, game it just won't be your game because of the cards you get but you know it kind of it does usually tend to balance out because usually everyone's struggling to get one thing because you can't have everything at once so maybe tally has a bunch of orders but no vines and i have a lot of vines but i don't have any orders so i don't know what to aim for but what we do like is the visitor cards because these provide really interesting dilemmas you know which to play or which option on them to take and these are also going to provide a lot of the replayability from game to game. And they're also going to inform your strategy because these really, you know, tell you what to do or what direction to take because they're really powerful. You know, for example, you could get a winter card that lets you age your wines. And then suddenly you have all these wines ready to fill an order that you have, which would have otherwise taken two years. Now you fulfill that order and suddenly you have all these victory points and a leg up on everyone else in the game. However, unsurprisingly, some of the visitor cards are overpowered, whilst others are pretty useless. There are a small handful of cards that will get in a player three or four victory points just from discarding a wine of a particular age. And that's as much as some of the contracts which require you to produce specific wine or wines that's obviously a lot more time and effort. And nothing makes me madder or sadder when Farrell continuously draws these cards, I never get them, all he does <laughs> just discards a wine, oh, four victory points, and I'm over here making sparkling wine, blush wines, year after year, and then he just goes and does that. It makes me very angry. <laughs> yeah, so I actually don't mind these cards because historically I benefit from them. But to be fair, like having four victory points on one of these, I think it's like a Sun of Visitor card, that's one fifth of the points you need to end the game, which is quite a lot for just throwing away one wine. So I think it's fair to argue it's overpowered. And you know, I was playing last night and all my contracts were only for two or three victory points. And then it's so much more effort. So yeah, I mean, Tally has a point there. The thing is, we don't really have any negatives to talk about. Yes, there is randomness, but this is what allows replayability. You know, the price you pay and what you get, they're really well balanced. I think it's an incredible deal for what you get. The components are really well made. And really charming and personally I always prefer wooden tokens anyway. We can't criticize anything mechanically because the game is so well designed. And this might leave you asking well why isn't it the best game of all time? Why isn't it our favorite game of all time? Although it is currently at number 21 on Board Game Geek's top 100. But the answer to those questions is just that it's just not that exciting. You know, it, it, it's a really uh, kind of solid game, but it doesn't do anything new. It doesn't push the boat out. And that's fine because this is a brilliant game, but it's just not going to get your blood pumping like other games do. It's just a solid staple. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is the theme. Viticulture absolutely nails the theme, largely in part due to the rustic and cute artwork and the wooden components you really feel like you are running a vineyard. 
planting your vines, harvesting your grapes, and selling off your wines for cold, hard victory points. The gameplay and available actions fit incredibly well with the theme. And the feeling this game gives us is what led us to have Viticulture Fridays. The game almost demands it. To summarise, Viticulture is a well-designed, solid, no-thrills worker placement game. It sets a very high standard for the genre, but it also won't particularly excite a lot of people. It doesn't provide the cutthroat competitiveness of Barrage, and it doesn't provide the pleasure you get of watching your engine turn into an unstoppable monster in games such as Everdale. What it does provide is a very pleasant evening with friends and family over a glass of wine or two and some snacks. And essentially this has become a comfort game for us and we've built a tradition around it which is Viticulture Fridays. And it gives that same cosy feeling as getting the same game out year after year at Christmas with your family. Although generally when we play this we get blitzed on wine and throw game pieces at each other when we lose. Although that is also most Christmases at my family's house. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and please subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate every like and sub, it really helps us to grow our channel. And let us know what your favourite wines are down below in the comments. Let us know what should, what, should, what should we be drinking next time we play Viticulture. We'd love to know. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye bye. genre, but it's also not a game that will particularly excite people. Isn't that right, Spencer? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this culture is, hello mate, a well-designed, no thrills, solid work placement game. So it's a really high standard for the genre, but it won't, yeah. Oh god, these are some great stuff. <laughs> What's going on? All right. Viticulture is a well-designed, no-thrills, solid work placement game, which is really great. <laughs> what are you two doing to us? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. We need to do out. Yeah.